Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got three replays in the HMH AMX M449, the premium French tier 8 heavy tank. This is a tank you're going to be able to earn in the upcoming December op that they've got running, which is going to be a whole month of play for which you're going to be able to earn this tank. So, what do I think of this tank in general? It's a pretty decent heavy tank. It's great when you're top tier because the upper plate can ricochet up to about 240-250 pen. Especially when you're angling it and stuff. And that means when you're facing your tier 8s, you're really good. The, the gun handling lets you down a little bit here and there. The DPM isn't the best, but on the whole, the armor's great. The mobility is okay. It's, it's a heavy tank after all. It's, it's got pretty decent mobility for a heavy tank. On the whole, it's a pretty nice tank. But tier 10s do tend to wreck your frontal armor quite easily, so just be aware of that. So what do you have to do to earn this tank? Well, you've got to get 450 points total to earn this tank over 30 days. So you have got you get three points for placing top of your team, two points for finishing second to fourth, and one point for finishing fifth to seventh. So if you were to finish, so the minimum, or I say, yeah, the maximum amount of games, the quickest, I'll go with that one, the quickest you can do this op is 150 games. And that is if you were to come top of your team every single game. The minimum amount of games, say you were to get one point a game, it's going to take you 450 games. But obviously, the way this game is, you're going to have some games where you come top, some games where you come mid-pack, and some games where you get you know, to seventh and you'll get one point. So it is going to take a while for you to get it. If you just hit that one point mark, that seventh place every single time. But for the most part, if you are going to come top all the time, you're going to do it in 150 games. And what is the tank like when you're getting it? Well, like I said, the tank's pretty nice. You see him, we're getting wrecked here by the T54E2, but I was over angled there. And he actually penned my side because there is a little bit of a problem with the AMX M449. Is that the sign armor isn't the best and it does have these cheeks on the front which you've just got to be careful of because people can pen them with about 220 pen a bit less than that and yeah you've just got to be careful when you're angling your best thing to do is if you're coming around a corner like this for example your cheeks covered your upper plates angled to the best it can be and you will bounce shots as you're gonna see with this t54e2 I keep myself wiggling wiggle 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 and he manages to bounce his whole clip off of my upper plate. Because the upper plate on this tank, like I say, when you're top tier, is great. It's really, really nice. You can bounce a great amount of shots. You have to also be aware that the cupola on top is a pretty easy pen for people. It can be a bit troublesome if you keep moving. Because obviously, you just keep yourself moving. You make yourself a bit of a harder target to hit. People will struggle with it. And on the whole, it's a, like I say, it's a pretty decent tank to get. And the HMH version is actually the best version as well. And that's because it's got spaced armor on it. You see the sandbags on the side and the, there's, I think there's logs on the other side. They count as like 5 to 10 millimeters of spaced armor. I think it is something like that. And you might go, what, 5 to 10 millimeters of spaced armor is nothing. That's not going to help your side armor when people are shooting at it. True. But heat rounds, HE rounds, they hit that spaced armor. Heat rounds are going to get absorbed. I've had it before where I have absorbed space, you know, heat rounds into my spaced armor off of the sandbags. Honestly, it happens. So don't discount it. And like I said, this is the better version because the Liberté and the... It's not the Liberté, it's the Galate, isn't it? The Galate and the standard variant don't have sandbags and they don't have that spaced armor. So this is just generally better for that. And HE rounds. The amount of times I've come against this thing in the side with a derp gun I should be able to pen it but I don't with the HE it's because it just hits the sandbags or hits the spaced armor and just blows up and doesn't pen the tank yeah don't discount it it's pretty nice the other thing I forgot to mention is if you already own the tank you're getting a silver boon of 5.9 million silver it's pretty damn nice so in this game on Vineyards, we've managed to push this K-Line. We've lost most of our health, but we have got a nice target. A nice amount of damage, I should say. 3k damage, 2.6k assistance. That's great. That's why I actually like the K-Line. Obviously, we did lose most of our health. But that assistance damage is great for this, this flank, basically. Now, you did see there the Tortoise. <laughs> the Tortoise, since it got those armor buffs, is a pretty mean target to shoot at. We were bouncing off the Capola all the time. Uh, that's just frustrating, but it is what it is. They've only got three tanks left. 
The medium tank is a Skoda T50. Like I say, the gun handling on this tank can let me down. So I make sure I make it fully aimed, fully led in well, and we managed to pen him. The Projector 54 tried to get a shot into our side there. He ended up just bouncing. We shut him down. We're looking for a shot at this Skoda, but unfortunately we can't quite get a shot at him. And the other heavy tank at C4 gets shut down by our allies. Uh, we finished that game with a very nice total. We finished with 3.3k damage. The epic victory, top of our team. And we finished with, yeah, 3.3k damage, 2.6k assisted, 3.3k blocked. The ace tanker, the steel wall, 2k base XP as well. I say this tank, when you're top tier, is really great. You get it in good situations. You get it hulled down with 8 degrees of gun depression. You get the hull armor, the upper hull armor, angled really well. You'll bounce a lot of shots. When you're facing tier 10s, like I say, they can just go straight through your upper plate. And you have to be wary of that. And when you're on ridge lines and you're facing someone and you angle your armor down, it's also a lot easier for them to pen you. You've just got to be aware of your angles and stuff. And just keep yourself wiggling. Keep moving. Make it a hard target to hit. Same as the Capolder on top. Now this is the second game on Westfield and we've started a little bit in because well, I forgot to hit record until I got towards the fight and was like, oh, God, am I recording? And yeah, so to be fair, you didn't miss anything. It was two minutes of driving up the Westfield Hill. So we've got to this ridge line, the one you've seen recently in one of the other videos that we took in the 50 TP prototype. And it's a good position for a heavy tank because you can get good flanking shots out. We're hull down against this Udez. We managed to shut him down. We've got a Dreadnought in front of us that we want to get rid of because, well, it's a Dreadnought. Dreadnought's hurt. We pop over, slap a shot into the side of his turret, but he's really distracted with his light tank, so I've just got to make the most of this. So we're trying to track him in place. We get a shot into his back end, do pen him, but unfortunately don't track him. We get slapped in the side from the right-hand side by something with a big gun. The Dreadnought bounces, and we swivel ourselves so that the big gun that was behind us can't quite get a shot at us. I'm trying to see if I can get a shot at him. Unfortunately, we end up missing, but I'm backing up so that the chimney is between me and him, so it's a little bit harder for him to get a shot at us. He's really got to work to be able to get that shot at us. Try and get another shot into 50 TP, but unfortunately, I only do track damage. And then I realise this heavy tank behind me is pulled out, so it's like, well, I'll just finish him off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that the gun handling can let this tank down a lot, but sometimes it just doesn't, and it just it, it's fine. It's, it's one of those annoying tanks where sometimes it misses shots that you sit there going, ha, but, but why? Why did you miss that shot, you know? It's just one of those tanks. So we got a nice shot into the 50 TP. We ended up tracking him in place. Unfortunately, he managed to repair and get down low, and now I want to get into a position where I can shoot at the guys that will be camping on the zero line because they do have a lot left. But like I say... They'll probably be on the zero line. We'll get a nice shot into the Brask. I back up here because I start getting shot at by something over there. I'm watching for the Shell Tracers. I'm just leaving myself in a position where I can be shot at so that I do get the Shell... You know, so I can get the perfect picture of where they are. We do get a shot in blind, which is really nice. I try and blind fire a shot into where those bushes are down. Because you never know, maybe there was something there. But we don't quite get any damage off of it and now we're going to pull forward so that we're in a little bit of a better position to be able to get shots at those guys on the zero line and possibly get them into render now there's an m103 over there and a mauer brecker well it's the unskinned mauer brecker the vk16801 p we get another shot into him we get another shot into the lycan which is good and it was probably him that we got a shot into blind and now we're looking at shots at this mauer brecker now we're trying to hit the lower plate at distance. It's going to be a little bit difficult. We get a shot into his tracks, track him in place. And now this M103 is driving over. Unfortunately, we didn't leave that shell well enough. And we ended up only tracking the M103. We get shot in the side by the 60TP that came up. So we've just got to be a bit careful again that he doesn't get another one into us. A little bit of a precarious position here because obviously he can get shots at us. And we still do have people on the other side that can get shot other shots into us from the zero line but fortunately enough they were too distracted with the rest of our team they also get shut down we managed to get a nice shot in to shut down the like and that was better led than the one on the m103 and now there's only one tank left it's this 50 tp it's the man that's managed to get two shots of damage into us he's pretty much the only one that's actually shot at us and um, we've come up against him from above we get a shot into his side pull back He's now looking at someone else, so it's like, okay, I'm just going to pull forward, get a shot into the side of his turret, and that's going to be all she wrote. We finished that game with another nice total in a tier 9 game. We finished with 3.5k damage. 
the victory, come top, 4 kills, 1250 assistance, 2.4k blocked, ace tanker, 1800 base XP, another nice game for the tank. I think it's a pretty nice tank. It's one of those that when they first released the AMX M449 back in the day, it was one that I was really excited for because... I just remember watching the PC replays of it and thinking, I love the look of this tank. Because it's in that, it was in the same ilk as having the. I can't remember if they brought them out at the same time. I know PC brought them out about the same time. But the AMX M449, the Patriot, and the Defender, they all came out about the same time on PC. And I think they might have done the same on console. And obviously, the three tanks, if you were looking at the PC tanks, were ridiculously good for the time. And it was like, well. The Defender's the Defender, right? They nerfed that to oblivion when they brought that over. The Patriot and the AMX M449, however, they didn't. And they were both really nice to play. And they both still are. Obviously, the Patriot recently received the buff that it got, the T26E5, which most people will have earned by now as well. And it's an absolute god-tier tank. The DPM on that thing is just nuts. It's great hull down. Yeah, this tank hasn't received any love since it came out. Like I say, it does struggle a little bit compared to a lot of its competitors these days, but that doesn't buy any that doesn't mean it's a bad tank by any means. Still a pretty nice tank. It's just sometimes limited by its situations. So we're on the third game, and we're on Kaunas. And I decide, you know what, I'm just gonna go in on this IS3. We managed to get the shot in to finish off the rover there. The IS-3 bounces off our upper plate. And like I say, facing a guy like this, this IS-3, I'm pretty confident. We track him in place. I'm going to tap him here to try and keep his tracks on. Keep close to him and finish him off. Unfortunately, Artie took a swing at us there. But he only shaved off about 100 health. And now I want to try and get a position now that I can try and get some shots on where this Dreadnought is. So we get a shot snapped into the turret of this Dreadnought. And I'm thinking he's probably going to pull back behind the ridge, so I can't quite get any shots at him. So I want to try and get some more elevation. But now there's this rover, and unfortunately that is a poor shot. And we end up missing that rover there. And he gets away. The dreadnoughts haul down, so I try and pop a shot at him. He fires a heat round at us and misses. Unfortunately, we just got an awkward angle on that dreadnought, so we can't quite find the pen. But he's now hiding, so I'm like, okay. You know what, I'm giving up on that. I'm going to change up the angle, go down here, and try and possibly push the things that are on my right. Because we did have a heavy tank spotted down there. So, we're going to poke around this corner, and then we find the Centurion 5-1. It's like, hello Centurion 5-1. Let me just end your life. Wait for the shell to go in, fully aim it, straight through his lower plate, finish him off. And we're going to poke around this corner now to see if we can find... This heavy tank that was spotted, the artillery tried to take a punt at us and missed. And it is the T26E5 that we were talking about a minute ago. I do have to be careful because that guy's rate of fire is blistering. But we do get a nice shot into his side again. He ends up tracking us in place. I'm like, right, okay, I'm attacking this guy. I'm going to attack this guy and see if I can get a shot at the stockade that's over there. And it's like, oh, <laughs> where did you come from, SU? He slaps us on the side, which is a big hit, which is unfortunate. I ignore the T26E5 to get rid of the big threat, which is the SU-130PM. And the stockade behind me gets shut down, so I'm not afraid of that anymore. And I go for the tracking shot on the T26E5, but we actually get to finish him off, which is nice. We're up to 2.4k damage, 1200 assistance, and there's some piggies to go get. So we load the HE rounds because I want to one-shot them. With the AP round, I could possibly low roll and not finish him off with the HE. I'm always going to finish him. So as we drive around the corner, we spot the M44, we make sure the shell's pretty well aimed, straight in, finish them off at 280, and we're pushing along. At this point, I'm not sure how many kills I've got, I've, I feel like I've killed quite a few right now, right? We're up to 2.7k damage, 120, 127? No, 1277 assistance, and we're pushing for that final piggy. I want... The Pascuches. We want to finish off both piggies. That's just the way it is. We'll keep the HE round in, which is a bit of a risk. But we find him. And we should be able to finish him off with this HE round. And then there's this light tank coming in. It's like, will I get the shot off of this artillery before the light tank comes in? I'm trying to look for the shot at him. And this light tank just just YOLO round. So we free aim the shot straight in. And unfortunately enough, the HE round pens the Tiger Shark. And we're going after the artillery. Now at this point... 
I forget that I've got a HE round in. I feel like I've, I only had two in the tank. And I make a mistake. I should have gone for the superstructure. If I had... If I just went for the superstructure there... I would have penned the Lorraine. And I wouldn't have taken the damage I did. But we do get to finish him off anyway. Because he rams us. And we managed to snap a shot in to finish the KV-85 as well. Fantastic. Run to 3.5k damage. 1277 assisted. I nearly said 127 again. And there's just the IS left on the enemy team. But he's hiding behind this little ridge line. And unfortunately, we don't quite get there to finish him off. Now, you remember that rover shot that we had that was a terrible shot earlier on where we could have got a kill? Well, that could have been 10 kills. But we finished the game with 9 kills anyway. 3,500 damage, 1,277 assistance. Ace tanker, Radley Walters, Devastator, Top Gun, High Caliber, 2K base XP. Another really nice game for the HMH AMX M449. And it is a really nice tank. Just be a bit careful with your armor and that. And don't be too overconfident when you're facing tier 10s. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success.